What's up guys, let's take a look at this unit eight exercise I gave you. We had first names that we sorted alphabetically, and then we had one with first and last, but it told you to just throw out the first and use last only. Now we've got one, that's how it works in real life, where you get first and last and you keep them. You never lose any data, but we've got to look inside of it and use only part of it for sorting. So let me start with a basic version and we'll build it up to something that works for what we want. The Python list type has a wonderful sort method that saves you a lot of work. And its default behavior is it looks at the first thing. If it sees a number, we're going least to greatest. If it sees a letter, we're going alphabetical. Uh, with capitals first. So if I sort this list, it's pretty good. It's going to do the job it thinks it's going to do. But we're looking at the first character of each string. And so we get like an A first name and then a C first name. When Wednesday Adams, who should be first, ends up at the end. She should be first because the last name is how we sort names with humans most of the time. So how can we make that happen? Well, the sort method does this by default, but it allows you to change it to whatever you want. For example, if we had a deck of cards, we could sort by rank or suit or face card or not, or red or black or all kinds of things. So we need to give it some kind of key. Key is the word for this parameter and we're going to say key equals, but it's not a static value. We're not saying key equals one or key equals hello. We've got to give it something dynamic, which in this case is a function. We're going to give it a function and tell it to use that. For example, let's do a really short one. And there's a function called len that takes the length of a string. So if we wanted to sort these by the shortest names to the longest names, we could say key equals len. And then if I run this, well, poor old Wednesday Adams is still going to be last, but we're going to sort the whole, th whole thing in a different way. We've got the short names at first and the longest ones at the end. Now, in this case, we need a last name function, and there isn't one, so we have to make one. Let's take a moment and do that. I'm going to say last name, and it takes a full name. And then I'm not going to try to be short. I'm just going to write everything out. I'm going to say first and last equals full name dot split, which is going to break it up based on the space. And then I'm going to say return last. OK, so it breaks it up and then returns the last. But inside the function, we're not like deleting the first name or anything. It's just using that. And the, the full name is going to be preserved when we run this. So if I say key equals full name, then, or no, last name is what we called it. By the way, when we mention these as the key, we're not putting parentheses after like we usually do with functions because we don't want to get the result right now. We want to pass along the entire function to the sort method, and it's going to use it multiple times every time it looks at a name. So now if we sort by last name, it's going to say, OK, every time you give me one, I'm going to take it, split it, look at the last, use that, but keep the original parts so that we're not throwing out anything. So that is what we want. We got the A last name first, and we got the X last name last. Let me show you some other things that might fit with how people do this in real life, and then I'll show you how we're going to print this in a way that looks good instead of it all squished together in a weird way, and each line has like three and a half names. So first of all, this is a little bit dangerous because it relies on having exactly two names. But what if somebody had three, if they have a last name? Or what if somebody has a multi-part name? This would not work because we're expecting first and last. So what we really should do is return 
the negative one. So I'm going to return uh, full name dot split negative one, and just say, all right, I don't care how many there were. I don't need to name the first because we're not using the first. Just give me the last one. And then I'm going to run this again to show you that it's still good or to show myself that I didn't make a mistake. And that's going to be a little bit shorter, but we don't care about that. We care about the effect. It's going to be better because, like I said, if there was a middle name, we're not going to accidentally take that. Now, this kind of thing happens a lot where you want to make a function and only use it in one spot. Like I'm making this function and I'm using it in the very next line and I never need it again. So if you're going to make a function like that, there's another way, a shorter way that people use and it often goes with the key. So let me show you that. Now I'm, now I'm suspicious. Okay, this is working. So let me show you another way to make a key function and this is something we haven't seen yet but it turns out to be used quite a lot in real code and it's called a lambda function lambda is when you want to make a function right here and use it right here and then it's gone we don't have to give it a name we don't have any side effects it's just there and gone so i could say i'm going to copy this and my uh my screen is a little weirdly delayed with the recording, so it feels off. Or maybe that's just because I'm sick. So I'm going to say key equals lambda and this thing. Lambda is a Greek letter. looks kind of like a triangle. You might have seen that. Um, and then usually when people are writing lambdas, they want it super short, so they'll just use x. But I'm going to say full name. And then I can delete this. We don't need this anymore because we never use that function anywhere else. You kind of want to embed it in that sort because that's where it matters, right? That would be another way to do it. And by the way, lambdas don't have a return. You don't have to say return because it's implied that you're doing one thing right now, passing it on, no problem, okay? So if this ever works, you'll see that that is an alternate way. And then I want to show one more thing, which is how can we print this to look good? Because right now it looks horrible. The result is all squished and you can't see a full name because it's partially here and then partially on the next line. I want to say, how can we print one name per line? And the easiest way to do that is with a for loop. Okay, I'm going to show you use a for loop, and you say, okay, for each name, print it and move on. Now let's take a moment and do that. So I'm going to go for name in roster, print. And then I have to change this, otherwise it'll print the whole thing 10 times. Name. Now, I don't know if this is working. I'm going to hit stop and try to run it. Um, but if it doesn't work, you just have to trust me. Or you'll have to do it on your own and see that it, work, it runs on your program. I don't know if the recording is messing up my code HS or if it's just the internet or who knows. But um, this is the plan. We went through how to use the key. We did a built-in function, len. Then we made our own function. Then we showed an alternate way to do it with the lambda. And now I'm showing how to print it with a for loop. You can also print it another way with the print function has something called sep. Sep means separator. So you can tell it to put a new line in between each one with the separator backslash in. Backslash in is some old fashioned code for uh, new line. And um, 
that works just as well. So, you know, this isn't going to, this isn't going to show on the screen, but you'll have to trust me. This will work if you try it. So there we go. And I'll post this for you guys today. Hopefully I'll be back on Monday if my uh, sickness improves. <laughs>